In today's video, I'm going to try to make it easier for you to decide on what type of computer monitor to buy based on what you're going to use it for. And if you're shopping for a TV, this video still applies. I will add nuggets of info to help you with that buying decision. So stick around. Buying a computer monitor can be a daunting task for most of us. They come in different shapes, sizes, and resolutions, all claiming to be the best with some misinformation out there. Let me show you the type of misinformation that's out there. So I was looking at this BenQ gaming monitor and scroll down to the comparison chart to compare with other monitors. I couldn't help notice the information for the display type may be confusing and even misleading to a consumer who's trying to figure things out. This monitor shows an LCD display type. Let's check out B&H's website. It says LCD. Best Buy says LED. Back to the comparison chart, this one says IPS. Others show LED. What the heck is going on here? Is there a difference? And if so, what's the difference? What if I told you they're all actually the same display type? Let's start with this one. IPS is not a display type, it's a panel type. LED is a subcategory of LCD. They're all LCD, more specifically LED. CNET's website correctly identifies the display type. It's an LED backlit LCD monitor. Good job, CNET. In this video, I'm gonna explain what those terms are to help make your buying decision easier, or at least you won't make a wrong decision having some knowledge about monitors under your belt. I'm gonna address four different types of user audiences based on their needs. But before that, let me talk about the acronyms I alluded to in the intro to give everyone a general understanding. Let's start with the display types that are out on the market today. All of today's monitors are LED. LED is a subcategory of LCD. LCD is the technology that replaced the now obsolete CRT, or the cathode ray tube, you remember those bulky monitors and TVs? LED and LCD are pretty much the same technology. Both use liquid crystals. The difference is in the backlight that shines on those crystals. Standard LCD, which was introduced about 20 years ago, used a gas discharge fluorescent light source as a backlight, whereas LED uses a semiconductor light source that emits light when electric current flows through it. You've probably heard of the term OLED that was introduced back in 2013. OLED monitors are still in the early stages of development with only a handful of models that were announced late last year, but OLED technology has been around for a few years on TVs. So if you're shopping for a TV, let me quickly explain what it is. LED and OLED is similar in that they both use a semiconductor light source. The difference is that LED uses a backlight panel to shine light onto those liquid crystals, whereas OLED doesn't even have a backlight. Each individual pixel is self-illuminating that has its own LED light source. This makes OLED technology even more energy efficient. The blacks are as black gets since each individual pixel is able to turn itself off you get a better view and angle, and even thinner since there's no backlight. They are very expensive though, but prices have significantly gone down in the past few years. All right, back to monitors. To make it even more daunting when shopping for one, there are three main categories of panels on today's LED monitors. It's important to know the difference based on what you're going to use your computer for. Each panel type has advantages and disadvantages. The easiest way to choose between them is to decide what features are most important to you. First we have TN. It's the oldest panel type since the introduction of LED backlit LCD monitors. The disadvantages to TN panel types are that they are horrible at color reproduction, having a bad contrast ratio, and a limited view and angle where the screen doesn't become as visible unless you're staring at it dead center. So why are they still being produced today? For starters, they're cheap, fitting the most budget-friendly options. Most importantly is that they are great for gamers, having the fastest response time, usually around one millisecond or less, they also can handle high refresh rates of up to 240 hertz. I'll talk more about refresh rate and response time later in the video. The second type of panel is IPS. It was developed to improve the limitations of TN panels. The colors and viewing angle are very good. You can view the screen from an angle and still get accurate color reproduction. The last type of panel is VA. That's a compromise between TN and IPS, having the best contrast ratio and a viewing angle as well as a decent response time and refresh rate. Contrast ratio is the difference between how white and how black a monitor can get. The refresh rate, measured in hertz, is defined by the number of times in a second that the display's image is updated. The higher the number, the smoother the image. A higher refresh rate is extremely useful for gaming, as it means the monitor is truly capable of rendering individual frames beyond the 60 frames per second standard. The response time is the amount of time it takes in milliseconds for a pixel to go from one color to another and back again, or how quickly a monitor shows image transitions. Higher rates of 9 milliseconds and up can cause ghosting, motion blur, and smearing of text. Gamers like a response time of 5 milliseconds or less. There are several connection port options that can be used to connect your monitor to your computer. Here's a list of the most commonly used ports. VGA is now pretty much obsolete as it's an older connection that doesn't support resolution of more than 1080p. More on that resolution later in the video. DVI is similar to HDMI, but it doesn't support the transmission of audio. 
HDMI allows you to transmit audio as well as video and offers higher resolutions. DisplayPort, this is similar to HDMI, but allows higher refresh rates of up to 240 hertz. USB Type-C is another option if your monitor supports it. The shape of the monitor has very little to do with performance. It's really about personal preference. Standard design supports an aspect ratio of four to three. I don't see many of these monitor types on the market unless it's a specialty purpose monitor like a POS system. White design is the new standard. Most monitors today are widescreen and offer an aspect ratio of 16 to nine. Ultra wide design is popular with gamers and creative professionals. If you want more cinematic experience or more horizontal real estate, you can opt for an ultra wide monitor with a 21 to nine aspect ratio. Curve design looks cool and allows for a better range of viewing angles as well as minimal distortion compared to that of a flat screen display. Monitors get smudgy when touched and dust can easily collect on them. So maintenance is important. Don't just use water in a rag. Instead use a screen cleaner protector and wipe with a microfiber cloth to keep your monitor clean. Hey, quick polls. If you're getting value out of this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. It helps with the algorithm for the growth of this channel. A monitor or TV resolution is the number of pixels displayed on the screen. The higher the resolution, the better the picture quality. A pixel is the smallest area of illumination on a display screen. Every display has a set of specific dimensions measured by the number of pixels. When you see something like 1920 by 1080 or 1080p full HD, it refers to the frame or dimension of 1920 pixels in width by 1080 pixels for the height, giving you a total of 2,073,600 pixels that make up that image. Most TV and online video content are an aspect ratio of 16 to nine. If you divide 1920 by 1080, you get 16 over nine by reducing the fraction. Let's look at other mainstream resolutions. SD format is an old format that was prevalent in the 20th century, well into the late 90s and had an aspect ratio of four to three. That's why older TVs and monitors were kind of squarish looking. Enter the HD era that was introduced in the late 90s and we started seeing more sharper videos being broadcasted by TV networks. The first was 720p resolution, which used a wider aspect ratio of 16 to nine. Then we transitioned to a better HD, which was called full HD or 1080p that became a thing in the mid 2000s. This resolution is what the vast majority of monitors are today. And even most, if not all TV networks still broadcast to this day in 2021. Next came quad HD, which is referred to as 2K 1440p resolution. Many monitors out in the market today have that resolution. I'm not sure why, but it didn't become a thing for TVs. Uh, we jumped from full HD to 4K. The two side winders here, as I call them, are 2K monitors. I plan doing a whole video on this resolution. I'll add a link to that in the description below. The vast majority of TVs being sold today have Ultra HD or 4K 2160p resolution. 4K is double the resolution of full HD. The $1,000 Dell 32 inch beast I have behind me here is 4K. I'll explain why I need it a little later in the video. 8K TVs were introduced a couple years ago, which is double the resolution of 4K. If you walk into a Best Buy, you will see a couple on display with a hefty price tag. There are even 8K monitors being introduced, also with a hefty price tag. Unless you're MKBHD shooting footage with $50,000 RED cameras. There's no point of investing in one today, while all of TV broadcasts aren't even 4K. I want to quickly talk about HDR. We know that the more pixels, the better the image quality. But not all pixels are created equal. HDR makes those pixels perform better by improving the contrast between light and dark. Bright whites look brighter. Dark blacks look darker, and the overall color spectrum is wider, offering more colors. Just because the resolution is higher, you have to keep in mind the size of the monitor. So while a 24 inch 2K monitor and a 32 inch 2K monitor have the same exact resolution or the number of pixels from a technical perspective, the perceived image or the viewing experience is entirely different, depending on the distance from which you are viewing. The bigger the screen, the farther away you should be sitting, and vice versa, the smaller the screen, the closer you should be sitting for the best experience. Try watching a 55 inch 4K TV from two feet away. It's not comfortable and the image will be pixelated. So now that you have a better understanding of computer monitors, you probably have a good idea as to what you should buy. But I want to make it even easier for you if you fall within the following four categories of users. First, a casual user. This could be a student doing homework or research for a couple of hours a day, three or four days a week. I recommend you get a 1080p monitor. This type is the most common one and one of the cheapest of all monitors. It will serve you well if you're on a budget and don't care much about the image quality. Second, a corporate office robot, I mean employee. So this is someone staring at the computer screen for eight to 10 hours a day, 
five days a week. I recommend you get an IPS 2K 1440p monitor. This is more expensive, but your eyes and overall health will thank you for it. I plan on doing a whole video dedicated to this type of monitor. I'll add a link up here when that video is ready. Third, a gamer. This is someone who spends many hours on their PC. It's difficult making a recommendation here, but I will take a stab at it. The reason is that it depends what kind of gamer you are with the types of games you play and the GPU or a graphics card you're using. If you play competitively, no argument here. Go with a TN 1080p panel monitor as any decent GPU will easily handle the graphics and it will give you the highest refresh rates and fastest response times. You can also go with a 1440 IPS panel with similar refresh rates and response time if you have more money to shell out. And if a crypto miner dies and you get lucky score on an RTX 3080 GPU. A 4K monitor could also be an option if the game supports it and you have a spare kidney to sell and you get an RTX 3090 GPU from a scalper. The last type of user is a creative professional. This is someone like myself, a video creator who spends a lot of time doing creative work. I shoot all of my content on the Sony a7 III and all of my videos are 4K resolution. I recommend an IPS 2160p or 4K monitor that provides the highest resolution to help with the accuracy of colors when editing videos and photos. I'm in the process of doing a full review video of the Dell 4K 32 inch monitor that I have behind me here, which I've been using for a year and a half. I'll add the link up here when that video is ready. By the way, if you're wondering about laptops, the same applies. You just need to find a laptop with a display that best fits your needs based on what you learned in this video. If you still can't decide on which specific brand of monitor to buy, in the description below, I added links to my favorite monitor. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you got value out of it, smash the like button. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of any new content I put out. Let me know in the comment section below what monitor you use and if you have any questions about this video. 